Hey guys, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create some high-end winery packaging in Photoshop. And to do this, we're going to be using the all-new Complete Iconic Font Library featuring some of the world's greatest font families with over 333 stunning professional quality typefaces at an incredible 99% discount. Now, for this lesson, we're going to be using just one of these typefaces, and we'll also be using a really cool mock-up to make our branding and packaging look even more cool. So if you're already going to get started, then fire up Photoshop and let's begin. We're going to start off here just by creating a new document, and I'm just going to enter a name for my document here. I'm going to call it Strawberry Fields Winery Packaging Design. Now, we want to make our file six inches wide, by nine inches tall with a resolution of 300 dpi rgb color mode 8-bit and you can leave the background content set to black then go ahead and hit create now the first thing we're going to do in here is double click on the layer the background layer to unlock it and i'm just going to type in the word background in all caps press command Control a to select it command Control c to copy it and you'll see why click ok now that we have our unlocked background layer with our new name Press command Control g to put it into a folder, double click the group 1 text and press command Control v to paste the name. Now the first thing we're going to do here is work with an image. This is a free stock photo that you guys can download from Pixabay and there's a link for that in the written portion of this tutorial. Now once you guys have downloaded this stock photo you should have exactly what I have here on screen. Now what we're going to do is press W on the keyboard to get the magic wand tool and then come up here and make sure that your tolerance setting is set to somewhere around 32 and then go ahead and click anywhere on the white background here. Now what we're going to do from here is come up to the select menu and choose inverse and then come down to the bottom of the layers palette and click on the add layer mask icon. Now we've just masked out the background but there's a couple of areas that need a little bit of attention. So press B on the keyboard to get your brush tool then the number zero to make sure it's at 100% opacity and now what we're going to do is hold the shift key and tap the right bracket a few times to increase the hardness of the brush and then just tap the right bracket key by itself to enlarge the brush. Now you should see over here in your layers palette that you still have your layer mask selected. Now press X on the keyboard to toggle between your black and white default colors. We want to make sure that we have black set as a foreground color. Now we're just going to come in here and quickly kind of erase this little bottom piece down here at the bottom of the strawberry that we didn't get when we removed the background. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit really quick, create a new layer, and then fill it with black by pressing Alt Option Delete, then Command Control and the left bracket to move it down one spot. And if I click on the layer mask again, I'll have it selected. Now it's a little bit easier to see that there's a piece of this strawberry here that is missing. So what we're going to do is just toggle our foreground and background colors so we have white as the foreground color. And now we're going to paint in some of that strawberry that we're missing. Okay, and if you need to, just press X to toggle back to black and then paint out any areas that you don't want. All right, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but we just want to come in here to clean up our selection a little bit. Okay, and you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because we're going to be stylizing the strawberry as well. But that looks pretty good to me. So now press command Control 0 to zoom out. And you can see that we are left with a pretty nice selection. Now I can just delete that layer. And now I'm going to move this tab to the side. Press V to get your move tool. And click and drag the strawberry into your main document. Now I'll press command Control and the tilde to come over here to my other tab. And you can close out of the strawberry image. From here, hold the Control key, click on the layer, and choose Convert to Smart Object. Press Command Control plus T to do a free transform. And we're going to rotate it counterclockwise about 45 degrees or so. And then what we're going to do is just move it somewhere over here in the middle. Maybe make it a little bit larger too by holding Alt Option and Shift and dragging out. Good. Now we're all set with our strawberry. It's in place. So now let's apply some effects. I'm just going to move my layers panel over here. Just pull it out of the side there. And what we're going to do first is double click on this layer and rename it Strawberry. Now hold the Alt Option key and click on the Adjustment Layer icon down here at the bottom of the Layers palette. Scroll down and choose Threshold, and now check off this option that says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. Once you've done that, 
We want to come over here to our properties where it says threshold level, and we're just going to reduce it a little bit to about 116 or so. Now select the strawberry again, come back down to the adjustment layer icon, and now add a levels adjustment. Now you'll see that the levels adjustment automatically has a clipping mask applied to it because it's between our strawberry smart object layer and the threshold layer with the clipping mask. So for the levels adjustment, we're going to come over here to the properties and let's just move this right hand slider, the white slider, in towards the left until it's set to about 231, like that. And that's going to give us a little bit more contrast there. So it's going to be a little more white and a little more black. Now select the strawberry smart object once again. Return down here to the adjustment layer icon, come all the way down to the bottom of this menu, and now choose gradient map. Okay, now we want to move this up so that it still has a clipping mask applied to it, but so that it's above the threshold adjustment layer. To do this, hold the command control key and tap the right bracket two times. Now over here in your properties, you can see that you have this color strip where the gradient map is. Let's go ahead and click on that one time. Now we're going to leave black on the left here, but we're going to change the white to something else. So once I select that box, you can see that you now have the color down here in the lower left portion. If I click on that, I'm going to now enter the hex value FA4B4C, which is this nice strawberry red color. Now go ahead and click OK, click OK again, and you can see the nice colored effect that that has on our strawberry. Now double click the strawberry text here in the layers palette and press Command C to copy it. Select the layer, hold Shift and select the gradient map. Now press Command Control G to put it in a group folder. Double click the group one text and press Command Control V to paste the name. Okay, now what we're going to do is select the background group folder, add a new layer just above it, and then press T on the keyboard to get your type tool. Now I'm going to click my cursor here and just type the letter S. We want an uppercase S, just like that. And now let's go ahead and open our character panel. So come up to Window and choose Character. And let's go ahead and highlight our text here. You can just Click two or three times to select it. And what we're going to do now is change the typeface to the typeface Brother 1816. And this is one of the really nice fonts, courtesy of Tippo Type in the latest bundle. And you guys will have access to this font, but just this one wait actually for this tutorial. In order to get all these other styles here, you guys will have to get the full bundle. But the one that we're going to be using today for this is the extra bold style. All right, so select that. Now let's also go ahead and change the size. We're going to make it about 395.64. All right, make it nice and large. And now click on the color tab here, and let's go ahead and enter that same hex value, FA4B4C. Go ahead and hit return. Grab your move tool over here in the toolbar, or in the tool palette. Now let's just move this down. We can move that character panel out of the way for a second. Okay, and what we're looking for here is to just get a nice kind of composition going with the S and the strawberry. I want the strawberry to kind of overlap the S a little bit. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. And now we have that same color, so it's kind of blending together, and you can only really see the black that's knocked out here. All right, press U on the keyboard to get your rectangle tool. And now up here in the toolbar, we want to choose Stroke and select None to make sure we have no stroke. Click on this fill here with the white box and the red stripe through it, and then click on this color picker up here. Now, once again, you can either enter the hex value manually or move your cursor outside of the color picker panel, and you'll be able to use the eyedropper tool to select that same color. And you can see it right here. Go ahead and click OK, and then click and drag out a rectangle above the letter S. All right, we can move it up a bit. And then we just want to give it a little bit of space there, and that looks pretty nice. All right, so what we're going to do at this point is select the Strawberry folder, hold the Shift key and select the letter S, so we have all three of these layers selected, and press G once again. Double-click the Group 1 text and just call this folder S Logo. Now come inside this folder, select the Strawberry, and press Command-J to duplicate it, then Command-Control in the right bracket to move it up one spot so that it's outside of that folder and then command control and the left bracket one time to move it down. But you have to make sure that this folder is collapsed before you do that, otherwise you'll just be putting it right back in. Now double click on this folder and we're going to change it to large strawberry. Okay, we're gonna zoom out a little bit, press command control plus T on the keyboard, 
And now hold the Alt Option and Shift key and drag outwards from any four corners of the bounding box. All right, so we're just gonna scale this up and then just hold the Shift key. You can let go, hold the Shift key and drag down from the bottom left corner because we want an even amount of spacing on the left and the right. Go ahead and press Return, hold the Shift key and tap the up arrow just a few times to move it up a little bit. Now come inside this folder here and we're gonna come back to the gradient map. So make sure that's selected. Come over here to the properties and click. And this time, let's go ahead and change this red color to maybe a dark gray instead. All right, so for the hex value, I'll enter 434242. Click OK, click OK again, and then go ahead and collapse the folder. Now just press the number five on the keyboard to reduce the opacity to 50%. And it just creates a nice textured background of a large strawberry. Now select the S logo, go ahead and create another new layer, press T on the keyboard once again, and then click your cursor over here. Now this time we have to make our text a lot smaller so that we can see it. So let's just come over here to our character panel and make it around 12 point. And then we're going to type out strawberry fields winery in upper and lower case. Press command A to select all. And now over here in the character panel, I'm going to use the font Baskerville. Now, if you're on a Mac, Baskerville, I believe, is one of the default system fonts. So you guys should have a few of these styles. But it's worth mentioning that in the complete iconic font library, you guys will have an extensive number of, of styles for this font. I think there's probably over 20 different styles of this font um, that are not, you know, default system fonts. And if you're on a PC, I don't know actually if you have Baskerville at all. So definitely check that out. If you don't have Baskerville, Feel free to use another nice looking serif font, such as Georgia, Times New Roman, or something like that. All right, now I'm going to select my font here, change the color from that nice strawberry red to white, and then let's just go ahead and maybe make this a bit larger. You wanna make this about 28.55 in size, then select your move tool. And now I'm just going to move it over here so that it's centered and tap it down a few times while holding the shift key. Now, once that's in place, press Command, Control, plus J to duplicate it, Command and the left bracket key to move it down, and then hold the Shift key and the down arrow to move it down towards the bottom. Now, grab your Type tool again by pressing T, click inside a few times to highlight the text, and what we're gonna do now is type out Produced in Napa Valley, over there in Wine Country, and then hold the Shift key and type the backslash to get this nice vertical bar, or a pipe if you wanna call it that, and then type 2010. Now press Command Control A to select all of your type. And now come over here to your character panel and we're going to change the size of this to 11.32. Then go ahead and click on your move tool once again. So this is just meant to be like, you know, some small text at the bottom just to kind of imply some detail here. Now let's go ahead and create another new layer. Press T once again and click in between these two text layers. Now if you happen to do what I just did and select the S by accident, you can just try it again. Come over here, maybe click somewhere else. Okay, and then just change the point size to something maybe around 24. Now we're going to type out the word Merlot in upper and lower case. All right, and you can see that we have our brother 1816 extra bold font selected. Now I'm just gonna move this over here kind of towards the center. Press T and click inside a few times. And then I'm going to change the size of this to, instead of 24, let's make it 34 point. All right, and then select the Move tool. Now, what I wanna do really quickly is just center some of these things here. So I'm gonna select the Strawberry Fields Winery text, hold the Shift key, and select the Produced in Napa Valley text. So I've got all three of these text layers selected. And now come up here to your top toolbar and see where you have the alignment tools and click on Align Horizontal Centers, just like that. And now we can move the Produced and Napa Valley text down a little bit. Select the Merlot text, maybe move that down a couple of clicks as well. And then press U on the keyboard once again to return to your shape tool. This time, click on the fill and choose none. Click on the stroke and make it white and change the weight of the stroke instead of three pixels to five. Now from here, what we're gonna do is click just above and to the left of the Merlot text and click and drag out a rectangle around it. Just so we have a nice looking border here. Then click on your move tool you can kind of move it around with your arrows just to get it in place. Now, once you've done that, what we're gonna do is select the Strawberry Fields Winery text, 
hold shift and select the produced in Napa Valley text and then press command G to put it into a folder. Double click the group one text and change the name of the folder to copy. Now collapse all your other folders, hold the shift key and select the background folder, press command G again, and now put this into a group folder just called artwork. Now we've created our flat label design that we're going to be applying to some cool packaging mockups. So be sure to save this file first as a PSD before moving on. Now for this part of the tutorial, we're going to be working with one of these really nice mockups, the front view 01 PSD file from mockup cloud that you guys can find in the freebies folder for the tutorial. Now this is one of many really nice mockups from the essential packaging and branding mockup in the design cuts marketplace. So once you have this file open, as you might have guessed, we're going to customize it a little bit and apply our flat design to some of these elements here. So once you have this file open, let's just start off by opening the Studio Colors folder. Inside here, you'll notice that you have a couple of shapes. So select shape one, and this is the floor. You can see if you poke the eye out, that'll turn the layer on and off. And once you've selected it, press U on the keyboard, come up here to your fill color, and this is where we're going to change the color. So go ahead and click on that, and then click on the color picker. And what we're going to do here is just enter the same hex value that we used earlier, FA4. B, 4, C, and then press return on the keyboard. And now we've just changed the floor color. Now select shape two, press the letter U again, come up here to the fill color, click on the color picker, and now let's change this color to 212020. And now our background is set to a nice dark gray color. Now, because we wanna keep the focus on the bottle and this nice box here, we're gonna crop the image a little bit. So go ahead and press C on the keyboard. And then just make sure that you don't have delete cropped pixels checked in case you need to go back. All right, and then what we're going to do is move your cursor over either the left or the right handle, click and hold the Alt Option key, and then drag in towards the middle just to crop the size. Now it looks like we have a little bit more room on the left side than the right, so now I'm just going to move this side in a little bit independently. All right, and that looks about even. Now you can see with the preview image here how it's looking and go ahead and press return on the keyboard. Now, once you've cropped your image here, if you need to go back, say you wanna add a little bit more room to the side, you can just press C on the keyboard and then maybe move the right handle out a little bit more and then press return once again to adjust it. Now, once you're happy with the crop, go ahead and collapse the Studio Colors folder and open up the Box Front View Vertical folder. Now in here, you'll see this Box Smart object that says double click and edit. So let's go ahead and double click and edit. Now in here, there's yet another smart object. So we're gonna double click on that. And now we are in the flat artwork for the, for the box. So what we wanna do now is come back to our label design. Okay, and what we're gonna do is click and drag this entire folder into this mockup. Okay, and once that's in there, you can click and drag it in there while holding the shift key and it should drop it right in the center. And we'll just have to hold the shift key and tap it up so that we can fit it nicely in place. Now, once your artwork is in place, we just need to make a couple of small adjustments. I'm gonna open the artwork folder here, come inside of the copy folder, select my Strawberry Fields Winery text and press Command Control plus T to do a free transform. Move your cursor over any of the four corners of the bounding box and drag inwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift. Now, we just wanna scale it down a little bit so that it's not too close to the edge. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. Go ahead and collapse the folders and now press Command Control S to save. And now once that's done saving, press Command Control W to close the tab and you should now see your artwork applied to the box. But after looking at this box, I'm noticing a little issue and if you zoom in here, you can probably tell that the color of the S and the color of the strawberry are not matching. That could be because of the shadow or some of the effects applied on the box itself, but we're just gonna go back into the smart object really quick and change that. So what we're gonna do is come in here, select the letter S, and now we can click on this fill color over here in the properties. And you'll notice that the hex color is actually a little bit different now. I'm not sure why it did that. Maybe there's somebody out there who's smarter than me that can figure that out. But all we're gonna do is use the eyedropper here to select that hex value once again from the strawberry. Go ahead and click okay. And do the same for the rectangle. Select that layer, click on the color fill, click on the color spectrum or the color picker icon here, and then sample that same color. Okay, and lastly, we're just going to do that for the Merlot text as well. Let's come in the copy folder, choose the word Merlot, 
click on the color and the properties here, and then use the eyedropper to sample that color. Now, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure why it did that, but this should fix it. So go ahead and save that file once again. And then once it's done, press Command Control W to close it. And there you go. Now everything is the same nice looking color. Now we'll have to press Command Control S once again to save this box. And once that's done, we can return to our main mockup file. So go ahead and press Command Control W to close it. And there you go. Now you can see the box is looking really nice in our scene. So from here, let's move on to the wine bottle. I'm going to click this arrow here to expand the folder and double click on the first smart object layer in here. And now we'll be inside of this file. So once you're in here, what we're going to do is first open this bottle folder if you don't already have it. Come down here and expand the cap folder, the subfolder, and now click on this purple capped color. For this, we're going to change it to the hex value CB3, CB3, D3E. And then we'll just go ahead and click OK. Now that's a very similar shade of red. It's just going to look nice with that cap because of the shading and everything like that. And now, once you've done that, go ahead and collapse this folder. And go ahead and turn on this paper folder on the layer above. And you can see there's a really nice kind of paper packaging here that we can customize. So I think what we're going to do is create a nice pattern out of some of the elements that we created for our label. Because it would just be too easy and boring to just slap the same label on here. So let's do something a little bit different. Expand this folder, and then come down here to the smart object that says double click to edit, and double click on it. Now once you're inside here, you'll see this color fill for the background. So click on that, and let's just make it solid black. So zero, six times for the hex value. Just move it down here to the bottom, and then click OK. Now there's two group folders in here. I'm going to turn off group two for a moment, and just leave on group one. Now I want to come back to my flat label art here, and now I'm going to expand this folder, open the copy folder, and grab the Strawberry Fields Winery text, and click and drag it into this Smart Object file. Now from here what I'm going to do is press Command Control plus T to do a free transform, hold the Shift key and just rotate it so that the angle matches the angle of the text in the back. Now I'll hold the Shift key and click inwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box, scale it down. Now press return or enter on the keyboard to apply the changes and you can see that now we have our text kind of going in the same direction. So from here I'm going to press command J to duplicate it and now hold the shift key and click and drag down to place the next copy down here. Do that one more time, click and drag while holding shift and place your text down here on the bottom. Now let's press command control plus J again and this time we're going to place a few copies over here on the left side. And it's okay if it gets cut off and kind of goes off to the side. All we're doing is basically repeating a pattern here with our text. And it's going to look really nice. All right, create one more copy so that you should have six copies in total. Now we can turn off the group one folder. Maybe turn on the group two folder for a second just so we can get an idea of what we're dealing with here. Now for this part, we're going to come back to our flat label design. And I'm going to collapse the copy folder. Instead, grab the S logo group folder and click on it while holding the control key. And now choose convert to smart object. And so now we have our entire logo as one single layer, which is going to make it a little bit easier here. So now click and drag this into the flat paper uh, packaging here that we have. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to press command control plus T on the keyboard move my cursor over the bottom corner here, and then just rotate it counterclockwise so that it follows the same kind of direction as our type. Now I'm going to offset this one a little bit just to create a more interesting looking pattern. Let's put this first one up top here, press Command J to duplicate it. Then we can move it down a bit, maybe a little bit over to the left, somewhere about there, and then go ahead and create another copy. Move this one down and also to the left a little bit. And then hold the shift key and use the arrows to kind of move it around. And now what we're going to do is create another copy, press command control plus T. And this time I'm just gonna move this copy over here just so we see the bottom of it. Press command control J once again, command control plus T, hold the shift key and slide it up. And then use the shift key and the up arrow just to tap it up into place. So we now have a nice looking pattern. 
And from here, you can either just leave the group one and group two folders off, or you can delete them altogether. It's up to you. But feel free to you know play around with the size and positioning of some of these elements in here. There's no right way to do this. It's just kind of you know eyeballing it and seeing what looks cool. So I'm just gonna fidget with that for a moment here and then press Command Control plus S on the keyboard to save it. Now once that's done, press Command Control W on the keyboard to close out of this tab and return to the previous smart object file. Now you can see how nice our pattern looks. But I think it's missing something. So let's go back in real quick and just add one more element. I'm gonna to return to my flat label design here and grab this nice large strawberry from the background and click and drag and drop this into the paper. Now we have to move this down below everything else, so just move it below all of the S's and all of the text, but you can leave it above the black solid background color. Now I'm gonna bring the opacity up from 50% to 100, so press zero on the keyboard, Maybe that's a little bit too intense. Let's go with 70. And now hold the shift key and just tap this up a bit so you can move the nice large strawberry up. From here, go ahead and press Command Control S once again so we can see how this looks in our nice looking packaging mockup. Press Command Control W to close it. That's looking good. Press Command Control S once again. And now once this is done, we can return back to our mockup and see how everything is looking. Wow, there you go guys, that's looking really cool. I think that's a very nice looking mock-up, and that just about wraps up our design tutorial for today. So, as you guys have seen, we created a very cool looking high-end flat label design for Strawberry Fields Winery that we then applied to this really nice looking mock-up here from Mock-Up Cloud. And this is just one of many mock-ups that you guys can find in this packaging mock-up courtesy of Design Cuts. You'll find it over in the marketplace. But the real winner here, guys, are all of these really awesome typefaces that you guys are going to find in the Complete Iconic Font Library. So I hope that you guys have found this tutorial to be helpful. Hopefully you've picked up a few new tips and tricks along the way. As always, you know, we'd love to see what you guys do with these files, with these fonts, and all the great work that you guys do on your own. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is Eric Vasquez here for Design Cuts, and we'll see you next time.